uh, African Americans in Georgia. And he currently has a segment uh, titled Word Up, which is on fixed uh, radio syndicated, uh, syndicated radio. It is called Word Up on four radio stations, ESPN and Magic 103.9 FM uh, and WEAS uh, FM. Uh, uh, Representative Gilliard is labeled as the James Brown of the Georgia General Assembly as one of the hardest working legislators in Georgia. So ladies and gentlemen, Facebook uh, family, please help us welcome the gentleman from District 162, the Honorable Representative Carl W. Scott Gilliard. Let's give him a hand. Let's have that in the next I also want to take uh, time to recognize our students who are with us today. Uh, first, we have Amario ben Amaria Bennett from Noonan, Georgia. She's a freshman, and her major is theater. Hey, Amaria. <laughs> we also have Kanika Walker. She likes to be called Q. Q is from Patterson, New Jersey, and she's a junior and a non-traditional student who's majoring in nursing. Yeah. Q. <laughs> we also have Jasmine Roberts, who is from Hinesville, Georgia. She's a sophomore and a political science major. Hey, Jasmine. Uh, Jason Nolte, uh, Nol uh, Nolton, excuse me, Jason Nolton Jr. I forgot the junior part. Uh, he is from Atlanta, Georgia. He's a sophomore and he's an engineering major. Hey, Jason. And also Angel Perez. He's from the Dominican, Dominican Republic. He's a freshman and majoring in psychology. Hey, Angel. We're so happy to have you all with us today. We're just going to have a conversation. This is our Blue Table Talk, and this is an opportunity, again, to bring some uh, honor and uh, some spotlight on TRIO programs throughout the nation. There's about 800,000 students who are celebrating TRIO uh, this week, and on this weekend, uh, National TRIO Day is on Saturday, the 26th. Yes, it is, and we've done a number of things this week to celebrate, but there are over 1,000 TRIO programs, uh, I think 1,080 to be exact, in uh, this country, and so we're so excited to have programs like TRIO that are 100% federally funded. And TRIO Student Support Services uh, it works hard here at this university to help our students. Let's get us kicked off, y'all. Let's talk about your experiences. As first-generation students, you know, TRIO works with first-generation students, students who may be low-income or students with disabilities. So let's talk about your experiences here. Did your uh, high school prepare you to come to Georgia School? Yes, ma'am. Talk about that. Um, well, first they helped me. They taught me about about the. Um, it's a program where you take college classes while in high school. So they were like, "Hey, I really recommend you to start your summer in the summer and take some classes off, which that will help you at the end with the in, with the tuition. So it will make it cheaper because it's free. So I did the program for I think about just one semester because it was only for seniors and juniors. Mm -hmm. So that really helped me because I mainly got rid of my core classes. So I'm technically a sophomore right now, it's just not really in the system yet. So yeah, that really helped me. And they also gave me a lot of counseling. They taught me about the ACT and other exams, about the CLEP exam, which is like a test that you, you, a test that you take if you know Spanish. So mm -hmm. that will transfer here, and those courses will transfer, transfer here. So really at the end, it really helped me a lot with getting rid of those classes and making it cheaper, cheaper for me at the end. Oh, that's awesome. That dual enrollment program. Yeah, yeah that's, that's what, what you called. did. What's your high school? Winter Forest. Shout out to Winter <laughs> Forest. Shout out to Winter Forest. All right, anybody, you guys just jump in. Anybody else talk about, you know, did your high school get you ready to come? Um, I don't want to say that they necessarily got us ready. Um, they did provide dual enrollment. That was like, they did push that on us a lot. It was like, yeah. you know, guys, like, it was like, you know, take dual enrollment so you guys, when you go to college, you don't have to take some of those classes. For me, it was just some of those teachers that I had that I still talk to this, to this day that explained what college was to me. And then on top of that, kind of just preparing me, I guess. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of like, I don't want to say that. Not to bash my high school. No, no, no. I it's love them, right. but it's like they, I guess they could have did more because like when the SATs and all that stuff came on, it, it was, it was bad. <laughs> they just pushed it on us. It was like hectic. It was a lot going on. But I say it just, it depends on the people at the school. That was my experience. Well, I'm hearing a lot about dual enrollment uh, back when I was in high school. I graduated in 96. Um, they didn't have dual enrollment. And mm -hmm. so um, to, I, I think that was a, a great opportunity that was afforded uh, to you guys to, to do that. I did have a, what they call like a medical assistant class. And uh, it was a co-op program, if you will, uh, where if uh, I was scheduled to graduate as a junior, 
but I wanted to graduate with my class because I went to school with them. Um, so what they did was allow me to take certified nursing assistant courses in my senior year. And when I came out, I was eligible to get a job and they helped me get a job. Uh, but to say, to prepare me for college, they did tell, I, I, I agree with Amari, right? They pushed SAT on us. Like, you know, um, for, so for preparation, I would not say so much preparation for college because college is a whole, it was a whole new ball game um, regarding, you know, there was nothing to compare or to bridge me. Um, but um, I, I felt it necessary to reflect flip back like she also stated to the teachers and, and they did you know help me with essays and structure of <laughs> um, sending out a resume and how to write a letter or to ask for uh, monies or um, you know scholarships and grants and things like that so I, I wouldn't necessarily say they prepared me for college but they gave me tools that would help me uh, put pieces together when I got here. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I agree. My school, I went to a Broward Institute, and we also had dual enrollment, and we also had um, a career center. It's called Liberty County Career Academy, I believe it's called. And so basically, you can go there, and you can take classes. Uh, you can choose a career pathway. You can take, like, nursing, um, engineering, stuff like that. You can take those classes there. And we also did dual enrollment. They did push that a lot, and also, like, SAT, ACT, yeah, it's more so pushed on you at a certain moment, not yes. preparing you at all. Yes. So I don't really think... We actually got prepared for college because college is totally different than what people, you know, yeah. tell you. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I think for the most part I agree with everything, but I think with high school they should probably think about like do like some kind of like workshop, you know, about college work because you know a lot of times coming in college, especially like a first gen, you know, you might be a uh, low income or disability or whatever. You know, a lot of time people always think students always come in with this like big mentality or this high expectation of your college this, college that, you have to get straight A's or whatever. A lot of time that can be intimidating. Yeah, you know, a lot yeah. Mm -hmm. a, lot of, a lot of time, you know, not everybody, you know, uh not everybody had plans to like go deeper into education or whatever. But if you have like a workshop or whatever where people can learn about, you know, financial aid, you know, different resources, you know, you can connect to like one of your own campus or whatever, it it gives students a better sense, you know, hey, you know what? Let me go with it. Let me, you know, with all the tools that I learned from you know, saying here, mm -hmm. I'm more comfortable just enrolling in my school. And, and, you know, just like go for it for all the way. Um, I do want to add to what you were saying. Um, another thing that a lot of teachers did that it was kind of like, you don't need to do that to your students. Explain why. They would say things like, that's not going to um, fly in college. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't just like, elaborate on that. What it's like, because then, that might be your experience or what you hear, but when you get here, it's like, that's, that's, not, that's, not, that's, not, that's not what I'm experiencing. Like, it's just, that was nothing. They just really like to yeah, say that. It and sucks. it was just like, you're making it seem so bad when it's not. Right. It's, right. Not, it's really not. Representative Gilliard, what do you think about the preparation for students to come to college? I know, you know, we're hearing about dual enrollment and those things that, uh, that, that we're, we're doing right. Uh, what are some things that concerns you about uh, these students, especially first generation students? Well, you have a lot, as you said, afforded to you in this generation dual enrollment. The counselor was my forte mm. to educate me about the, the grants, the opportunities, the scholarships, what, what was available for me. Um, to stay plugged into that. Um, then the vision. A lot of I heard the majors. I heard psychology, engineering, film, political science, and nursing. Nursing. And so you all have a focus of where you're going, especially as a what? Freshman? Yeah. And you're also? Yes, and I just want to add, I've had this since like middle school. My brain has been different. So it's kind of like I already had it prepped and everything. <laughs> so, so you're ahead of, of the grade uh, in reference to your focus. Um, and, and when I was in school, of course, my counselor was my best friend because I, I, I had an opportunity. I was going to be a band director because I was drum major at my school. And I had all these scholarships at Morris Brown, FAMU, and all the above. So when you, but I did not know I was going to be guided to political science. Mm. I had a chance to meet Ms. Coretta Scott King. And she changed my life in reference to the mentorship. You've got to have mentors. I will say it again, you've got to have mentors. Because mm -hmm. that mentor as an engineer, that mentor as a political science, nursing, you know, psychology and film, they're going to guide you to some, some good points that they went through that worked for them. 
and then you have to decide what works for you. Um, those are uh, the things that you guys talked about. I, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing um, um, Representative Gilliard talk, to, talk about uh, counselors. I mean, counselors aren't what they used to be back in the day. You know, it was about just uh, preparing students to go to college. They have so many other things to do. Uh, so hearing that you did get some of that, you know, this is what you need to be doing. This is not going to fly in college. But I think we do need to be more purposeful about what we tell you will not fly. And I think that that's what goes uh, into when students come as first generation students. Are they really, you know, that ABC, you know, that alphabet soup we throw at you guys, you know, that you need to know when you get here, those kinds of things. I think, Louisa, you, you talked about, I mean, Angel, you like to be called Angel, excuse me, about your first semester and how to transition from your first semester in college to uh, this semester. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes. So when I started my first semester, it was more like you said, they didn't really prepare us for school, like for college, like as a whole, like they would make it seem like, oh, this and that, or it will be harder if you do it this way, or it will be easier for you to do it this way. But the enemy just depends on the person and what they like and what they're looking for. So basically I was, Kind of in my own, especially because of COVID, so that really like impact like mm. you being able to talk to counselors would be like over soon, and soon will be down. The internet will be bad. Yeah. It was just a lot of stuff going on, so that made it a little harder for me. So when I started my first semester, it was like six six classes. When in high school, I was taking like four or three because of online, and I was a senior, so I was like, oh, it was just a lot. So I really had to learn how to organize myself and keep everything written down and have due dates and just really just go off by that and not just be like oh i can just do it later like in high school we we all all of us did homework like last minute or in class <laughs> so it's like in college that does not that doesn't work you have to do it like at least one to two days before because it's just so much and then on top of like five other classes it makes it really difficult at the end but i did learn how to be more organized i did use the resources that are offering trio so yeah, that for now I'm doing way better this semester. I only have four classes right now because I did like doing romance, so that made it way easier. So yeah, you guys have helped me a lot, and I just joined Trio. Thank That's you awesome. for the plug. <laughs> <laughs> well, Trio is a breath of fresh air. I have to say that I um I started off at a community college in New Jersey, um, and you know after getting so many no, 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 no. Um, I still pushed. I graduated with my associate's degree after not being in school for 24 years. Um, and, then I, um, and then I transferred here. But transferring here means I left New Jersey, which is, I, I grew up there all my life. So to come here um, to Georgia was something brand totally new. And to, I, I remember the email that I was, I, I received. And it said, you may be eligible for this support, student supported services. And I said, what is this? I never heard of TRIO. They didn't offer it at my old school. I didn't know anything. I, I, I did everything like on my own, like, you know, asking people yeah. in my old school. But when I received that email, I did not just scroll through. I clicked in it. And it said to apply. And I applied. And I think Ms. Jones called me. Mrs. Jones, she called. And she said, well, we have such and such seats. She said, and we're going to go through the application. She said, you look forward to hearing from us. If you don't get in this time, we'll keep you on, and, we, and you just keep trying. Don't give up. And for that, that word alone, let me hold on. Well, I said in my mind, if I, I didn't even know what it was. But if I don't get in, at least they, have not, they will not forget me. But to my surprise, I was eligible, and I made it in. And I still didn't know. I came to Ms. Jones like, what is this? And she explained it to me, and I went to the rally. It was a rally about it, and it was mandatory for us to come in and sit in this meeting. And they had a young lady from Patterson, New Jersey, come in, mm -hmm. um, Yvonne, yes. her name. I love her. I just want to say I love her. Oh, <laughs> wait. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Her again. Yes. <laughs> she was so enthusiastic. I, I don't just think TRIO is a push for us or an empowerment, but the people that they have to come in to speak to us are on the same path. Mm -hmm. And they speak to us, and it's not like, you can't connect the dots. This was a breath of fresh air for me. It connected the dots. I came and I said, Miss Jones, I don't know how I'm going to pass algebra. Miss Jones said, you going to get past algebra. <laughs> <laughs> and I cried. And, you know, it's not all about, you know, always laughing and stuff. But you laugh, you cry, you push.
push through it and our saying is persist no understanding stuff happens and that's why I push you know and I'm in you say that you know yes yeah. <laughs> can I can I can I stop yes. you for a minute please so and and I feel you right now uh, in reference to no one knows your journey your story so you're talking about a young man from Hazard County Savannah Georgia down by the railroad track you're talking to a young man there at 13 that the gangs put out the gang. So they became my heroes. I made a promise. I was going to go all the way. And I was going to make a difference. And so now the things that I do are a tribute to what they did for me. So as you sit to this table, no one knows your individual stories. And when you speak, you speak with power because there is passion in your pain of everything you've been through. So you're going to make a great ambassador when this is all over. You know, and I, I'm just saying, I'm going to tell you that right now because I feel your your journey in that respect. I'm in this, but no one knows my journey. Mm -hmm. So I learned something from um, a guy named Judge Murray Silver Sr. He was Dr. King's, Daddy King's general counsel, because I'm very close with the King family. And um, he said one day, he said, Carl, tell your story, Carl. Mm -hmm. I'm like, mm -hmm. Talking loud, man. <laughs> he said, tell your story. And I was exactly where you were, sitting down there, tears in, in my eyes, forming Feed the Hungry, trying to make it happen, lights being cut off, water being cut off from Feed the Hungry while we were feeding people. No one knew our story. So when they see us feeding 10,000 people at one time, they, they said, wow, this is great, but you don't know my story. So whatever you do with your major, when you walk into your, your position, Tell them your story because you will inspire other people that will come in your footsteps that don't think they can make it, don't think that they're, they're material to be in college, especially a returning college student. So kudos to you. Yeah. That is awesome. Anybody else want to chime in? Yeah, I'm going to chime in. Talking about preparation, I know um, Angel was saying um, – that uh, he had to work on time management. Um, so, I, you know, I was wondering, do y'all, do they talk about financial literacy to you guys? Time management to you guys? Those kinds of things, those skills that you're going to need, you know, in order to be successful. Because, like uh, Mari said, they go, this is not going to fly in college, but <laughs> what will fly in college? So do y'all get that, that, that now in, in high school? Um, I will say we were offered a financial literacy class, but I never took it. But it's kind of like Miss Jones, girl. You know, I have my mom. I'm sorry, I'm a mama's girl. It's like you know, that's my that's my mentor. That's my support system. It's like we keep it separate from mother daughter to like okay, it's business time. You need to learn that da da. So it's kind of like with that. Um, I don't know. It's like times are changing. It's different. So um, I don't know. It's different. Wait. Can you say the other half again? Because I kind of got lost in I'm sorry. When she starts talking about her mom, she does that. I do. <laughs> but it, but just, just the kind of um, um, exposure you all get to, to time management um, or, or financial literacy or talking to you all about not just there is a scholarship, but how to apply. What, you know, uh, coming up with a personal statement, writing those essays to apply for scholarships. Because I have students say to me they don't apply because they got to write an essay. And I'm like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you have to write an essay. Right. Boy, don't I'm not going to lie to you. 90% of them. You have to write yeah. an essay. So do y'all get, are you getting that or did you get that? I would say one thing they really didn't prepare us for is time management. Managing your time in high school and then college is two totally different things. Mm. It's uh, it's different because it's like you're independent. Nobody's going to tell you, hey, you got class at this time. Hey, do you work at this time? Hey, you got to go to work. Nobody's telling you that. So I said it's one thing they really don't prepare you for. And I believe we did have financial literacy classes, but I think often a lot of times they were in the afternoon after school. And that's a really big problem because a lot of kids work after school. So it's like, how are we going to go to this class? And not only that, but transportation issues too. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You were going to say something, Jason? Oh, yeah. So with high school, I feel like they probably, I feel like with high school, they did talk about it a little bit, but they really was like influenced. I about it. Basically, they wasn't really, like really encouraging the students, like, hey, y'all, we know y'all seem to get ready to graduate, whatever, but with all these resources we have here, uh, we have y'all, I need to go for it. They really wasn't talking about that. I think, like, coming in college now, I think with a lot of kids not having a, uh, a soldier with that asset, 
it's just kind of hard for them to really be like, you know, it really kind of hard for them to like just go through the most shit and just continue to follow their journey or whatever. But I think overall with resource like Trio or whatever, that's definitely like a life changer too because I know like easily coming in, I already knew how college is going to be like, but once actually like, you know, get involved with Trio or whatever, I can only say that with all the school, with all the skills and tools I know now, I know that it's nothing that, it's nothing that I can't hope I do want to piggyback off what he says, like the workshops. Like, so time management is something that we all need, you know, whether you're a college student or not. But college is, you know, it gets you focused with regards to, I have five classes, right? So they're heavy hitters, the classes. So I'm <laughs> like, I have patho, physiology, I have biology, right? And so those are two heavyweights. So you're like, okay, I'm spending four hours studying biology. By the time I'm finished studying biology, I... Pathophysiology, you gotta take a seat. You, I'll say you your mom, right? So yes, um, but Trio, what Trio did for me was put things in perspective. And um, I hate to say this, but it's so true. C's do get degrees. You know, you wanna aim for that A. But I was sitting in Ms. Jones' office, and again, back to that algebra, because algebra was something, my Ooh. goodness. It's just like the numbers just come off and hit me in the glasses, right? And so I'm like, oh, wait a minute, where's the X? Where's the variable? Where's everything, right? So I said, Miss Jones, I don't know. She said, oh, no, you know. Oh, yes, you're going to pass. And Trio put things in perspective. They told us that they give us time management workshops. They give us financial literacy workshops. And in between your classes, you can get on Zoom and be like, hey, I'm here. Hey, I want to learn about financial literacy. <laughs> and I think that helps us put things in perspective as far as time management, uh, how, to, how to, you know, Use your money wisely. I was talking to Ms. Jones. I said, Ms. Jones, I don't know. I'm going to pay for sense of sense. Ms. Jones like, oh, no, 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 no. I'm sending you more paraphernalia. I'm sending you more things that you can read about, you can plug into. I was asking about scholarships. Ms. Jones like, oh, no. I get this stuff off my desk. I'll put it in your email. And I was, I'm grateful for it. It's just like, even her answers. I asked her for something. She's like, you know what? My time schedule doesn't allow. I respect her for that. My time schedule doesn't allow it today, but I'll do it tomorrow. I'm like... Where is this lady coming from? Who is she? <laughs> you know, I, and I'm glad to be in a, a group that is supportive like that. I'm not going to say I do not have family. I did lose my father in 2020. And my mom, you know, she helps me, but I'm so I'm miles away from her. You know, and, and right. This is like a community, a family. Like, I could go, Alyssa, man, I just keep buying Alyssa. I have a question. I know what I'm and, and so Trio gives me that push. They give me that, we got you. Even if you don't see us, we're here. Always in that and that lounge. I don't know about y'all, but that lounge is a life saving for me. The library is too much, it's an overwhelming for me. You know, it's too many people coming in and out, and every time it's like church. Every time that door open, you're like, <laughs> <laughs> right? And I'm looking, you know, for this trio lounge, mm -hmm. nice and quaint, mm -hmm. quiet. Somebody's in there if I need help. You're you making me want to go in there. Right? Listen, <laughs> I love the lounge. I, love, I, I, just, I, I just think that this supportive service group just prepares us for what is real that's good. Yeah. what is that's good. not and, what was what and, is. and we need y'all we need y'all to come in and fill the voids of the leadership um, I have um, interns that are part of my team uh, from the 100 uh, collegiate black men of DeKalb County I have students from uh, Savannah State uh, all over Atlanta and so these these interns are my leaders they help me pass bills. They help me come up with policy. They help me, you say film? Do you know Savannah is number two in feature film? Oh, wow. Alexa, ATL. Did you know that I was one of two film commissioners in the state of Georgia? Oh, wow. <laughs> and I'm on the committee that writes policy for film, music, and digital download. So, and with that, it gives an opportunity to be at the table. Stacey Abrams told me something very powerful when I met her. If you're not at the table, you're on the menu. Mm -hmm. I told Stacey just two weeks ago, if you, it's not about just that you're not at the table, you're on the menu. It's who you're at the table with. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So every opportunity you can get to shake a hand, network, say hello, get in that room, study to show yourself approved. Find, if, if you're getting these potential uh, uh, grants or scholarships, don't push it to the side, explore every one. We just gave out about $20,000 to the Georgia Legislative Black Caucus two nights ago, $2,500 scholarships. 
the scholarships were available. I'm going to put it in front of y'all so you can go ahead and apply now. And as the next chair of the Georgia Legislative Black Caucus, I'll be able to say, trio, 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 trio. Wow. But I need you to apply. To apply. Makes sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. yes. I'm also on appropriations. That's where the money comes from in the state. And so with appropriations, if you don't ask, you won't get. And so we're, we're getting money for Georgia Southern this year. Now you're familiar with that? It's millions, millions of dollars coming to Georgia Southern. You mentioned that you were from the Dominican Republic. Our dean of the Georgia House of Representatives, the person who has been the longest serving, 48 years he's been there, Dean Calvin Smiley, is getting ready to be the ambassador for the Dominican Republic. Uh, President Biden nominated him. He will be the U.S. ambassador. I'm going to link you up with Dean Smiley. It is who you will meet that will affect your life. You need to get involved with film. You need to get involved if you're going to be a political science major. In the, in the, in the words of young people, let's do the job. Because you need to meet policy makers, uh, a general of a council. We have 64 attorneys. Let's talk about church. I don't go biblical from it. <laughs> yeah. The Bible says, right division make it plain. Right. The division may tarry will come to pass. Right. When you become a policy maker in, in political science, you have the power of the pen. I have a documentary out called The Power of the Pen on how anybody know about Ahmaud Aubrey? So I've been session about two years ago, Ahmaud Arby, the tragedy, the tragedy part is that he lost his life, Breonna Taylor lost his life, her life, uh, George Floyd lost it. I'm watching all these hundreds of young people march. I'm messed up, you're talking about breaking points? I said, we gotta do something. So I took the power of the pen and I wrote the citizen arrest repeal. Are you with me? That law was 1863. That law was an outdated antiquated law that was made to lynch people. So my Aubrey was a, a, a modern day lynching. They told me in policy that that law would never happen. We repealed Georgia citizen arrest law, Republicans and Democrats. Are you with me? My mission today is to challenge y'all into greatness. Be the best engineer that you can be. And as you said, be for real. As my young daughter tells me, no cap. <laughs> And if you're going to push P, push pro progress. <laughs> push positive things. Push policy. Are you with me? So, yeah, you've got you to keep it real. And my thing is that in this room, y'all are phenomenal. I mean, I don't want to say this at the end. I want to say this now. Y'all are phenomenal. You can affect change. You can make a difference. And so with the, the financial literacy part, get it. My parents first African-American family to buy a house in the all-white neighborhood, but they never taught me about finance. Are you with me? So I went into my spells of doing what I need to do to rent and all the above. I never knew about the power of your credit. I never knew about your, your credit from your social security number to Dun & Bradstreet for your business. I learned it, and now I'm confident, it, and guess what I do now? I teach it to people. So we have a program through the Georgia Department of Community Affairs called the Georgia Dream Program. And we've got 244 people into homes and we gave them $15,000 down payment assistance. Are you with me? That's why you need financial literacy because you've got to be better than what we've done. So that when you, when you leave school, you won't be in debt. Amen? Amen. Amen. You don't want to have that on your shoulder. <laughs> and you don't want to have extra stuff on your shoulder that you've accumulated. That's why financial literacy is so important, not just that you get through school, but that when you graduate, you're free. Your credit, I used to work as a sales manager at Dan Baby, and I had 18-year-olds coming in with a 750, 800 beak, and I wonder, well, you haven't lived yet. Their parents put them on the credit. They established credit. Financial literacy is your most powerful tool to be successful. Eat it up, eat everything up that you can. So I, I just wanted to jump in because as y'all were talking about y'all individual majors, I just see future, you know, psychology. With COVID, over 800,000 people have lost their life. Their family members that are not at tables anymore that we don't see because they're not there. The number of people that need counseling. And with us, with us not having Medicaid expansion in Georgia yet, 
the number of people that can't afford it, they're going to need you. <laughs> you know? So there's a commissioner of DHS who's a good friend of mine. As you get ready to move forward, you need to meet her. So if you pursue even doing something with DFACS or any of those DHS, you can link as you have your practice in psychology. You have a practice, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but, but we want to be a, a, a link to you all. When you, what are you going to do with your degree in political science? I will work for a nonprofit. <clears throat> Very good. And your focus will be what? Public administration. Very good. So the current public service uh, commissioner, who's the vice president of public service commission, Tim Eccles, his background is nonprofits. So I want to link you with Tim Eccles because he's brilliant in nonprofits. I am a nonprofit. But he's far smarter than me. And he's connected. And, and that's what I'm talking about. We want to connect with people who are going to take you into your journey. Your destiny, I'm sorry. I don't want to be so much better. <laughs> <laughs> are you with me? And then you got to work your passion. Work it. You don't want to be in a position. Some people, they're fighting their way in their majors. You know, they're finding their way. Um, but if you are passionate about nonprofits, we need you. We need policy, and we need to be able to, to go to the next level. We just entered an agreement today, Feed the Hungry with Dual World Industries. We were partnering with them, the District Attorney's Office, Department of Juvenile Justice, Savannah Technical College. We need this partner with, with Georgia Southern. We, you know, we're waiting. Uh, right now, we've been, we've been talking already. We're just waiting on the right programs. So you're, you're needed. And what, when you, what are you going to do with your degree? And the end goal is to like start my own company, start my own engineering company. Through building? Yeah, building, machines, factories, or even cars. Very good. So can, can I say, uh, Jason is, is being just a little bit humble here. Uh, he is uh, a part of Collegiate oh, yeah. 100. Oh, yeah, I will tell him. <laughs> Go ahead yeah. and tell him. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so, so far, this is my second year joining Collegiate 100, and just with that uh, program, it's really been, like, probably the best thing to be. Side Trio is really probably been the best thing, just because, like, Beside, you know, just the academic wise, but like once you get out to the real, the real world, it's like a lot of time. That's another thing too that a lot of college students kind of lack uh, when it comes to that mindset. It's just like, okay, yeah, you probably got your GPA, yes, you get all the degree, you know, all the grades, or whatever. What's what's next? Like, yeah. how you gonna like, like yeah, how you gonna get to like move forward with your plan? But with Collegiate 100, I learned like the power of networking. That's something that you know, it's also a big aspect too because it's like. No, as you get out of the real world, you're going to have to learn how to communicate with different people. Yes. Especially, you know, wherever you decide, you, you know, like the workforce is going to be big or whatever. And just join Collegiate 100, I just kind of learned that aspect of networking. So just in case, you know, when I'm out there in the world, it's like, I want to, you know, I want to be part of, you know, like just like running around, just, oh yeah, okay, I'm done with college, what I'm supposed to do? I already going to have an idea what I'm going to do. Matter of fact, I might have like dogs lying Line up oh, you soon will. I graduate. You will. Yeah, and not, and two, you know, with Collegiate 100, it's a mentor, uh, like a mentor organization too. So just even like these sort of young kids, you know, they kind of help me grow because you know, with college, you come to high school, whatever. I was just like, okay, I'm just gonna do the same thing I do with high school. You know, just like go to work. You know, just make good grades, whatever. But actually, like, had the ability, like, to change not myself, but like younger kids too. You know, who also like a part of generation that. Actually, you want to change the future? I said it's really been like an honor. So, the, so I really recommend that you know school. You know they really need curse all the organization and we saw out there, trio, collegiate one hundred, and just everywhere else because, like I said, the academic can only get you so far. But once you be have like the experience, yep. bro, it's not any job you can really go for. And this so, chapter, yeah. and your chapter was chosen. Oh yeah, like uh, the best, the national chapter. Keep moving on that. It's a networking. I'm, I'm going to be bringing uh, the Collegiate 100 from Fulton and Cab down in April. And, uh, yeah. I guess yeah. I'll see you then. Yeah. <laughs> now I'll need some help. Maybe we can network and oh, yeah, get them some, some things set up. Gotcha. So powerful, powerful tools to work with. Um, I want to go back on the engineering part. You know, uh, 
we have millions and millions of dollars. I'm on the transportation committee. So through DOT, we have a lot of engineering, uh, RFPs, requests for proposals, through all of the projects we're talking about through the state of Georgia. There are millions and millions and billions of dollars. Infrastructure dollars coming from Washington, D.C. So when you get ready to move into your own firm, as you work for someone else, think about your own firm because you can look at applying for all types of opportunities for the people you meet. You all have more vision than we've had. You know, I always tell people if, if I put on your glasses, I probably couldn't see what you see. Am I correct? You put on my glasses, you might see some things you don't want to see. <laughs> <laughs> but without vision, the people perish. That's right. You got to have vision. Don't let anyone stifle your vision. So whatever you see, and you know, you can't tell everybody what you're going to do because they won't believe you. Like, oh, yeah. what, mm. That's what I've always been You say, taught. one day I'm going to do, just write the vision. Exactly. Make it plain. Don't show what your left hand, no way. Let your right hand know what your left hand is. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. yeah. that's how you're going to be successful. They won't believe everything that you're going to do. And a lot of times when I'm in the House of Representatives, I'll, I'll work hard and I'll, and I'll strategize. Why do you work with Democrats and Republicans? Because it's not about parties. People. It's not. It's not. We get nothing done when we, when we talk about gender or ethnicity or race or parties. I'm out. It's about trying to get something done. So I'm, I'm, I'm very much the conscious of the General Assembly because I'm going to say to the governor, the speaker, let's do what we have to do. Absolutely. You, you've come a long way. I mean, you, you just about said that just now, uh, Representative Gilliard, uh, from this little boy in Chatham County to where you are now. And a lot of times, students just can't see that far. Uh, I don't know if you saw that far then, but talk to them about your journey, though. Uh, just a little bit more about your journey as to where you were and where you are, are now. You know, from, I, I think I read in your bio that um, something, how, how Feed the Hungry came about. Uh, when you and your wife uh, had uh, this Thanksgiving, big Thanksgiving meal, I believe, for so many people, and then it was like, there's a need. And uh, a lot of times we don't see that. We see there's a need, and we tell somebody else there's a need instead of us trying to fulfill that need. So could you talk to us a little bit about that? You know, when I was growing up, um, all of my friends, were, we, we were in the neighborhood where everyone was a superstar in sports. Everyone was great. Mm -hmm. So we, the neighborhood in Hatcher County on the east side of Savannah, Everyone played sports. We played basketball. We played kickball. We played volleyball. Boys and girls. Everybody was superstars. So when I went to Beach High School, I was offered to, to play on the football team. But I was also a martial artist. So I was, anybody know what a bow is? A bow is a six foot staff. So when Bruce Lee used nunchucks, I used the bow. And I was a master at the bow. I'd make it talk. Some of my friends saw me working out doing cottage behind the school in the ninth grade. And they said, you need to try out for drum major. I said, what's a drum major? I didn't even know what a halftime show was. <laughs> <laughs> so I went, and they recruited me. I tried out for this, this character that I'd never even seen. And I applied what I had. And that was my whole life of everything I did. Use what you had. And I took that bow, and I used it to, use, to, to take the mace, the baton. And you ever seen a, a guy that's been in the baton? When you see everybody bending back in the city, they got it from me. <laughs> because that's, that's where it came from. So I was very, very good as a drum major. That afforded me the opportunity to have opportunities to go to different colleges, scholarships. I played every instrument that was woodwind or brass. Mm -hmm. I learned from Mr. Lawrence Hutchins, who was my mentor. He taught me. I, I, I was quiet enough to listen to him. To shut my big mouth up. What it taught me was discipline, mentors, staying focused, using what you have. Don't complain. Just use what you got. And then sometimes you got to be quiet because a lot of times we would not let people know what we were going to do on the halftime show until the night of the halftime show. So yeah, we came out of hell of a, um, helicopters, limousines, all the above, and wild people. Lights out, all the above. They didn't ever know what we were going to do. I applied that to my life. I am a Nike moment. I just do, just do it. Because if you talk about what you're going to do, you're not going to do it. Through the politics of Savannah, I was a young man. I gave up so many years of my life. 
I came home, two of my friends were killed to senseless violence. And I was wondering, why isn't somebody doing something? Nobody was doing anything. And the leadership wasn't giving us the baton. They weren't training us. So the Bible says the kingdom of self is violence, but the violence is taken by force. Force, that's right. You with me today. (laughs) (laughs) So so I'm I'm applying this thing like, man, you know, I'm not gonna complain. So let's organize. Organize. So guess what? Here's don't tell anybody, but I was in a rap recording group. If it weren't for our rap recording group, there would be no big boy. There would be no Grammy winners from Savannah. We were the first rap group in the whole South to be able to have recording contracts and travel with everyone. So Big Boy watched me as a role model in this positive rap group. So I learned from this rap group as I met Coretta Scott King, who asked us to do positive rap, get out the vote, stop the violence. I meet Jesse Jackson. I meet Reverend Jose Williams, who was my mentor. Jose P. the Hungry, Dr. King's lieutenant. And I'm sitting at the, f- the feet of people like Dick Gregory and others that were part of our history. And I'm able to hear them just so into me. Are you with me? It afforded me so many opportunities. This young kid who was a rapper, who formed a, an organization from that rap group, who started organizing, who started writing programs like the Chatham County Youth Commission, they did, you know, these are unprecedented. Young man at 19, 20, 21, 22. I celebrated 38 years of service at the other July 31st. Wow. They called me Johnny come lately. <laughs> Who does this young person think he is? Who do they think they are? So I have to say, how you like me now? <laughs> <laughs> But the point of it is, I never stopped. I never stopped believing in y'all. And a lot, I keep trying to inspire you in one sense to say, y'all have much more than what I have. Um, the support system of your family is so important. But sometimes you have to get extended families. You, your family is here in Savannah? Yes, sir. Your family is in Hinesville. Hinesville, ATL? Yes. Yours is? Newark, New Jersey. Newark, New Jersey. <laughs> so, Windsor Forest, too? No, no, Georgia. No, oh, Noonan, okay. I'll oh, see a lot of people don't know about Noonan. Like, if you yeah. know where Atlanta is, it's like an hour away. From. Yeah. <laughs> so, a lot of a lot of things of what I apply my life to what I what I've gone through is it's about relationships. My mother uh, was a cook. She cooked for Colonel Hunter, Hunter Army Airfield, the brother of General Hunter. Are you with me? And every time she cooked, this little kid would help her cater, her, 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 she was a caterer. So when she catered, she cooked Jewish holidays and all the above, so I learned about masa, ba, soup, all the above, but I learned the culture of the Jewish community. Are you with me? My best friend was Thomas Chu, Chu's stores. His mother and father raised me as subsidiary parents when my, my parents were working two jobs. And Chu's, my brother was Thomas Chu, so I learned Chinese at the age of seven years of age. And so I learned about relationships. Why do I apply relationships now? Because it's about relationships. Don't ever let anyone tell you it's because of the color of your skin or gender. It's about relationships. We have to break these 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 walls down. Are you with me? And and so that's why it's important as we have great representation to this table, you never shy away from your journey. When we formed Feed the Hungry, I was working for the big organization. I was number three in the whole organization, making six figures easily. Two weeks before Thanksgiving, Georgia has a law to this day. You know they can tell you we no longer need your services. And you can't, and it's nothing you can do. You can walk in today, they can say, we no longer need your services. We gotta change that law. You know what the minimum wage in Georgia is? Anybody? How much? Seven twenty-five. Oh, that would be good. <laughs> Five dollars. I will say yes. Oh. And fifteen cents. Oh. That's the number one. That's lower. <laughs> Watch this. Georgia is the number one place in the nation to do business. We got to change that law. Remember, I said that we got to change that law. So, change for me from my childhood. I believe all things are possible. 
You get what I'm saying? Because when I don't, I didn't complain about what they didn't have. We created youth programs. We created things for youth to do. We created everything. Um, ben Tucker was a, a radio uh, owner of WSOK and Level One One. As a rapper, I met Ben Tucker, and he said, "You guys need to come on the station. I want you on the station every day." And we went on the radio station and learned how to talk on radio every day. I've been in radio and TV since for thirty some odd years. Ben Tucker sold it to me. Are you with me? You've got to you've got to connect with different people that are mentors, and I've just met so many good mentors in my life. So I attribute it to where I'm at now. Um, anybody ever hear of a company called Envirovac? So Kevin Jackson is the CEO of Envirovac. Um, you know, mentors like Kevin Jackson that took a company out of nothing, uh, came straight out of UGA, and now it's a multi-billion dollar company in Savannah, Georgia. You ever hear of a guy named Reed Delaney? Delaney Enterprises? Multi-billionaire that came from the environment that you sit in right now. So we got, a, we got a, I have an assignment to, to connect you with some people because these people that I'm talking about, I want to connect you with because they're game changers. And they might not be in the nursing field, but they might know somebody that, that does. Do you know Paul Hinchy? No, no, sir. St. Joseph Cowan? So you know, those are game changers. You know, uh, Feed the Hungry partners with St. Joseph Cowan, okay. and we open the empowerment center. So as you get ready to go to nursing, we got to introduce you to the game changers. I want to give them an opportunity to ask you any questions. We have about 10 minutes or so minutes left. Do you guys have any questions? He's, he's answered so many. Yes. But I yes. uh, just want to give you this opportunity to close out with the representative. I have a question. What was the number one thing or multiple things that motivated you to keep pushing, keep going, even if you felt like, oh, is all this really worth it? Am I going to make it? You know, I have all the odds against me. You know. In 1988, I went with Miss Coretta Scott King and Reverend Alvin Affey and Dick Gregory to 28 cities from Memphis, Tennessee, Mississippi, and Alabama. And when I went, you, you hear about it in your history books, but to go back to Memphis, the hotel where Dr. King was assassinated, to go through Mississippi and Georgia, and it changed my life. And I was a good foot soldier. I was set up chairs all the above, but the stories that they told me, I was never the same again. And so it was a life changer. Um, you said, um said when you was setting up feeding feed hungry um, you know nobody knows your journey with your lights getting cut off and you know how did you keep your head above water to not even let people know what your journey was because there's a difference with not letting people know your journey or you know seeing it all over your face you know how did you you know persevere through that you know in 2009 when, it's, when we were 28 of us were fired from baby and we were fired for achieving we weren't the lower achievers, we were the highest making bracket money, and we were fired two weeks before Thanksgiving. I gave up my house, I gave up my Hummer, and I, and, and I was in a hotel with my family. And I said, never again. I said, never again, because we couldn't get any help as a middle class family. Mm -hmm. And so even our passion for my, my wife and my daughters, um, they're, they're so loud, I mean, because they, they know the journey. Um, and so we encourage ourselves but from my experience, we said it, it ain't gonna happen again. So that's it. Have you always enjoyed politics? <clears throat> I've been groomed for it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the person that set up and watch all the newscasts and, mm -hmm. and, and, and all the history from, from L, LBJ to Eisenhower. To, I studied to show myself approved. I, I'm a history buff. And I just used to absorb history. And so when they got ready to talk about uh, you have the, the podium in, in General Assembly is called the well. They said, uh, and so you'll see if you pull up some of my footage, they'll say, Representative Gilliard speaking to the bill. When I grew up on Saturday mornings, we had cartoons. Y'all know about that, right? Yes. And so this cartoon says, I'm just a bill. Yes, I'm only a bill, and I'm sitting here on Capitol Hill. But I learned the Constitution from a cartoon. So when I got up and said, We the people in order to form a more perfect union, they said, Oh my God, he's so articulate. That was just a cartoon. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? So it was in my nature. I studied it. I just never knew that God would uh, would catapult me into the position because I, I love politics. I studied it, and I always said, if I can make a difference, and God gave me an opportunity. 
So what's the best thing about your job? My first. No, you can go. Ahead. Oh, okay. So <laughs> what's the best thing about your job? Like, what's like, what's the thing that you always like wake up in the morning and just like, you know what? I gotta get going on. I feel like go ahead, like tackle everything. The con- being the conscious, I can call the governor right now, and I'll say, Mr. Governor, now, you know, I want to be the conscious. You know, give the people a chance to make that decision. And when I get through t- talking to him or texting him, he's gonna get quiet. He's gonna say. I said, now keep on chopping, Zeke. Oh, keep on chopping, call. <laughs> to be the conscious to the Speaker of the House, to be the conscious to the Democratic Caucus, the Republican Caucus. I just did an event in the Capitol called the Savannah Seat and Sample. You know, food will bring people together. So I had all the Democratic uh, senators and state representatives, the Republicans, everybody from them to the custodians. And for that moment, there was peace. Mm-hmm. I could talk to them then. We, we make, this too shall pass. You got to be able to use the moment to make a difference. If I had left the General Assembly today, I know that I would have been conscious to, to the state of Georgia. I know that I have. My question is, what makes you keep going in the game? What's what motivates you to, you know, do this every day, help other people? What's the thing that makes you, you know, succeed? Like, want to help, want to keep doing better for society in this world? Because we see so much that's out there. I mean, you know, let's go back to Breonna Taylor. She, my wife's from Louisville, Kentucky. We married 27 years. And to see someone like Breonna Taylor lose her life and get no justice. To see struggling folk that are working jobs and can't even pay their rent or their mortgage. They're struggling. The one percenters are continuing to make all the millions of dollars. You know, every day in life you see something. That my, my seatmate, my best friend is from Cordell, Georgia, and my other best friend is from Forsyth County. Okay? And we and we talk about cultures. That's why I'm saying, regardless of your being in the, the position in psychology, you've got to see further than that and make a difference. Um, people are struggling. But guess what? Each one of each one. We gotta push each other. Because I'm gonna come to you and say, hey man, I, I got some folks. They need some counseling. You remember I met you? And, you know, I'm going to need your help. Are you with me? Can you take my blood pressure? <laughs> so that's what we got to do. And that's, that's what, you know, it's just, in my family is the most important thing. Um, when, I, when I was asked to run, I didn't want to run. I had all these people, all the different mayors from Garden City and all the above, they were asking me to run. I said, nah, I'm out. I don't want it. And uh, I'm good. And I went to my family and said, they want me to run for this position. And I don't know about it. And my family didn't say anything. So I told th- about three different mayors. I said, give me three days. I just, I was going to say no. And I get back in three days. I told my family, I'm just going to say no. They said, you're crazy. We was ready. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh. My family has been the biggest support system. I mean, everything I do, they walk with me from feeding the hungry to they come up and help me. My, my daughter's 19. She just uh, came, left the capital with me, helping me. My wife puts up with me. My daughters, everybody, it is my family. You know, I even have a brand new, beautiful lab, chocolate lab in Mojave. She puts up with me. She comes to the Capitol too. Oh. Yeah. When I ask her, I say, "Are you, are you everything all right?" She says, "I don't roll." <laughs> <laughs> this has been this has been an awesome conversation. You you just said something that I wrote down. Use the moment to make a difference. You really made a difference today, Patricio. Yes. We thank you for being with us, sir. Thank you. And I want to thank our wonderful trio scholars. We call them scholars, you know. And the reason is, anybody can be a student, you can take a class here or there, but these are, these are scholars, okay? They're scholars, and we are so proud of them. Thank you so much for your input today. You guys did a great job. Well, again, tomorrow is National Trio Day across the country. Uh, trio uh, here at Georgia Southern Armstrong campus is going to be uh, volunteering. I want you All to right. know that All we're right. volunteering at the Habitat for Humanity Restore. Very good. And then we're going to Second Harvest Foods. Very so good. We're going to help over there. So we, have, we believe in giving back, not just being consumers, but being producers. So we're going to produce some, some awesome. service in the community. So again, we thank you so much. And we thank those who have joined us today for this Blue Table Talk. And we look forward to having more of these and having just having a conversation. So thank you all. Bye-bye. Awesome.